Hello and welcome to another installment of Ask an Idiot. So one of the first questions we have is how did the cat get so fat? Well my answer to you is because you feed the cat a whole bunch of crap and keep it indoors and so it doesn't have to hunt anymore which is why it doesn't kill any mice and it's just fucking useless. It's a big lump of fur on the ground that you have to step over because it's too lazy to even get out of the damn way. So the cat is fat because you baby it. You have a big fat furry baby and it's all your fault. Next question. Another question we got was about how much wood a woodchuck could actually chuck if given the right tools. Well, woodchucks honestly are more of a burrowing mammal not to mention, what do you mean by tools? If I give it a chainsaw, it's going to run away. If I give it a live chainsaw, it's going to kill itself. If I give it a spade, it's just going to look at it and attack it for territory. I don't know. So right tools would be probably nothing if I were to say anything. I don't know, maybe you could engineer like a super woodchuck and give it you know, titanium teeth so it has a grill because from the streets. At any rate, so I looked up what the average bit that a woodchuck could do and it turns out it says right here I want to say maybe 1.7 per hour for a white and we have red oak over here which is what the problem specified for so let's cut to this and do a little bit of math on the whiteboard now okay so they said that the amount that a woodchuck can do white pine is about 1.7 linear feet per hour, white pine is about 32, red oak, which is what I've been asked, is 57 pounds on average, which means we need to set up a conversion factor, so times 32 pounds here converted to 57, so that the white pine and the white pine cancel out, and we get our red oak. Okay, so if we work that out here, let's get this. We get about approximately 3.028125 feet per hour. She said in a day, so we multiply that by 24. For a given day, 72.675. So that's if a woodchuck went at a red oak an entire day, non-stop, 24 hours, it would hit about 72.675 feet linearly. Not cubed, not squared, linear. Like a line of cord of oak. Though, there is a constraint here. If they have woodchuck slider, that'll slow them down. Since we don't know the amount or the formula for how much it slows them down, I can't really calculate it with the constraint. But this is as good as it's going to get. So, there's your question. That's how much a woodchuck could chuck with the proper tools of red oak within 24 hours. Uh, someone else asked, why does time seem to slow down when you aren't having fun and then speed up when you are? Well, that, my friends, is called the theory of relativity. Einstein coined it. And here's some examples. Yeah, she has pans on her titties, and then she has what you wishes were your hands on her titties. Then it goes to how progressively a minute feels rather than what it is. So, bing, bang, boom, question answered. Next one. Someone told me, <laughs> and told me to take this seriously, how many dicks, which is uh, half a question, it's not even a phrase, like a complete phrase, so I feel like this is a setup for something, but I'm supposed to be serious, so let's just put aside the horrible grammar and just go with it. I mean, maybe I'll have a second segment on sentence structures so that we could quit having this, but anyways... How many dicks? So, like, how many dicks to make a tree? To, uh, screw in a light bulb? Uh, how many dicks to, I don't know. Oh, here's one. How many dicks to, I don't know, please your girlfriend? 
That's a lot of dicks. But anyways, aside from your mother's promiscuous tendencies, let's get back to the point. When we're asking about how many dicks we want, I usually follow Flight of the Concords, which they say... And that is how many dicks. Too many. Too many dicks. Okay, so someone also asked me, what happened to music? Someone also said, what happened to youth today? I'm not going to touch the youth part. That's really ambiguous. Besides, as soon as somebody gets old, they hate the generation before them. It's just a thing that always happens. So I'm not going to pay attention to that. Though music, that's a real thing. Um, so we have our classical generation where it was just mostly piano, real instruments, there was no mixing, there was no electronic music period, you had Beethoven, Mozart, I know it's not how you spell Beethoven, and the talent required and credit given was as high as it could be. If you composed the music, your name was on it, you were given credit, I mean that's basically all it was. Also, the only people that had time enough to get noticed for the music were people that had enough talent to get noticed and paid for it so that they could devote enough time to it. Because you can't master a piano in a year or two. It takes a lifetime. As for the violin or the cello or any of the brass instruments, they would play in the classical era. Then we go into the rock stages where we have more of an electric guitar and we have drums now, we have a bass, and there it's just a stereo speaker system. We don't really have mixers or anything with it. So our, like, Basically, the effects that we had were very small at best. Uh, something I can remember from this era was Billy Squire. He was a famous composer. He wrote a lot of songs for a lot of bands, didn't get any credit for it, and then he said, uh, screw you guys, I'm going to make my own music. So he made his own music and got credit for it, and uh, he was the uh, guy that did, um, I think it was like Touch or something. He had a lot of huge hits, but still, it was going down for talent required and credit given to the people made it over the time. We go down to where we have more synthesized music that's created by somebody secondary and then just given pretty faces to sing the music, sometimes not even singing it. Sometimes it would actually be voice actors and actual singing talent and they would just mouth the words. That was the boy band era where it was, you know, as low as it could almost get because almost anybody could synthesize music and so no one was actually given credit for what they were doing, thus the talent required is so very low because it's easier to punch a key than it is to master a piano. So, even though that's technically punching a key, but you see what I mean. You can hit this and say, oh, I have a song with the key of F, and anything you play now is in the key of F. That you have to actually know what key of F means. Then we go to where everything's been condensed down to a program where you can mimic guitar, you can mimic piano, you can mimic violin, you can mimic drums, you can have everything set just the way you want because you have a laptop. So we've had things come out like dubstep, we have covers of now ruined classics, and no one is given any credit whatsoever. Like the people that originally made the songs are not given as much credit as they should. Uh, most of the people that actually are making good music aren't really making music, they're synthesizing it now. So the talent required to do it is basically five bucks to buy a cheap program. So that's what happened to music. Okay, so first somebody said, what are the wings on tampon pads for? And then there was, a wing is not a tampon, and then a tampon is. So we're, this is just going to be tampons versus pads. So here's a pad. Here's a tampon. Tampon is not a pad. Tampon has a string so that they can pull it out. Why? Pull what out? Basically a tampon is a cotton dildo for them to fuck themselves with until they're dry. It's just like your penis. It, it does the opposite of make them wet. It's exactly that. So that's what a tampon is. Here's a pad. Here are the wings on the pad. This is so they can wrap around the undies and they have adhesive on them so that they don't scoot around. So all the women are nodding in agreement, all the men are grossed out and confused, so let me just make a special segment for the men. 
Tampon. Pad. For more information on tampons versus pads, ask your local librarian. <laughs> Just kidding. The wings on pads are actually radar dishes to transmit secret messages by satellite to other women so that they can create a secret information network. That's how they always know every bad thing you've ever done in an argument. It's part of the secret society of women that are forever working to make sure that men never win an argument in their entire adult lives.